later than advertised. That was um, the most bizarre bit of uh, technological failure I have had. Um, and somehow the GoPro started broadcasting live. Good job, I managed to keep the language in check um, there. So um, I just thought I'd uh, try going live again just to explain myself and apologise for the lack of the live broadcast this afternoon. Um, but let's just take a strop. Hi, James. Yeah, apologies for the absolute failure before. Just thought I'd take it for a stroll through the boat park here as it is at the moment. He's back. That's right, Tony. Yeah, I'm back and um, back in one piece. FYI, hi. Um, yeah, some very strange occurrences before with um, the GoPro back in the harness. That's right, Stephen. All right, Ollie. Yeah, let's have a look at the conditions. In fact, in the last 20 minutes, it has... There's a flag just to let you know which way it's blowing. There's some cloud up there. Um, yeah, it has kicked in a bit more. Um, could be a dangerous sundown session. Um, dangerous because I'm meant to be going home for tea, uh, which is of course very dangerous to be late home. But that does look like there is potential out there Okay, for those of you who are interested, here is the all new mount on the Hobie 16. Hi, Eric. No way. That is amazing. Eric, we need to see this boat on Show Us Your Cat, of course. So um, send some pictures once you've got her all rigged up, um, whether it's just on the land or on the water. I think everybody needs to see this. Do you know what year it is? That is very exciting news. Um, but on your new 16, you could put a mount such as this. This is a bit of windsurfing mast. This is a top section. I've got it tied on to the dolphin striker and then tied around the front beam here. And then the old faithful GoPro mount on the end and then this is the kind of angle that we're getting or anything in this kind of axis i suppose so there we go once again apologies for the the poor transmission before i think um there we are what else is new in the boat park we've got the all new sorry there's a bit of a shadow there in the shot um os3 trampolines on the Hobie 16s. Mmm, silky. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna continue our stroll. Try, I'll try to stay, keep the shadow out of the picture. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Sean. Hi, Sean, nice to have you with us here. Yeah, it all seems to be going well there. I think you're nailing it a lot better than I am. I need a back beam for my Hobie 15 2000. The old one is the new club. My one is... Oh, okay. Where, which country are you in, Herbert? Um, there is a very slim chance. Now, actually, we broke one a few years ago, so the slim chance has expired. We haven't got a spare one that we'd be able to hook you up with. Um, yeah, unfortunately, for something like a 15, the chance of there being a used one about, you're better off looking for a really old used boat and just using it for spares, or you're just gonna have to buy a new one. Can anybody guess what is under the cover? Oh, in Germany. Oh, there's gonna be, you're gonna be able to find something in Germany for sure. Just look on the Hobie Cat website for the Hobie Dealer Network and then you can find all of the German Hobie dealers on there. And if you phone around, then hopefully somebody should be able to steer you in the right direction. Hello, Steve, you got in. FX, that's, James, it's good, but uh, not quite 
Right, a lot of projects for the have handyman. Never end. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a good old design. Yeah, but what's the model? Um, yeah, I think the big logo on the cover gives it away. Okay, so here we've got um, a whole selection of FX1 hulls. For some reason, the FX1 is the most abused boat in the Wildwind fleet, and these boats have been undergoing a refurb ready for assembly uh i should think next week we'll be putting those bad boys together um okay just continuing our stroll through the boat park um welcome on board everybody who's just joined uh sorry about the uh sort of uh, technology technological disaster earlier and followed by the random gopro streaming um because i thought if i couldn't do a live video yeah, what I was actually doing was I was preparing to record a video on the topic of safety, would you believe? Um, fresh OS3 trampolines. This next one I'm going to show you is going to absolutely... Yeah, so this is a Hobie 15. Very nice. The perfect first catamaran if you're going to be sailing with... Perhaps if you're looking to go sailing with your kids or two adults and you don't want anything too challenging, uh, Hobie 15, brilliant. Very good, very stable boat, very easy. Hobie 16 is a wolf in wolf's clothing. Um, that bad boy is going to bite you, but it's probably the greatest boat to ever exist. This is the Hobie Pacific. The 18 foot boat um, with the brand new OS3 trampoline. A new trampoline definitely takes a boat that maybe was looking a bit rough around the edges and suddenly that boat is looking tight. Oh yeah, tight. So there we go. This is the excitement that is spreading around the Wild Wind Boat Park at the moment. You can hear the halyards clinking with joy. Very nice indeed. Yeah, so I just thought I'd um, I'd check in just to, I, I kind of felt that um, by failing earlier, I'd kind of left everyone hanging a little bit, which would have been impolite. So apologies there. Um, if anybody's got any questions uh, that they'd like to ask, otherwise, I'll just stroll back in the other direction and uh, it's probably time for a drink. Um, but as I said, I just, I just recorded a video while um, I was unable to live stream uh, on the topic of safety and safety considerations. I should have that uploaded later on this evening. Um, this of course is the uh, Olympic tornado well, the once Olympic tornado. Let's flip that bad boy around. She's, um, she's awaiting a trampoline. It won't be a new one on this one. This is the tornado that we uh, call the school bus. It's uh, the wild wind tornado. Um, this pair of hulls here is bad boy 94. Of course, a very, um, a very tornado boat. Uh, these are RS Zests. This is an absolutely perfect first boat to go sailing on because um, you can have one boat on yourself. It's very simple. You get one sail, plenty of space. So if you remember the Pico, this is like the more modern design of the same idea. So the new features are that the boat is more spacious and it's got a lot of volume in the front and it's got quite a, a good pronounced lip there which deflects the water so you don't get a lot of water in your face. Oh my goodness, just had all the comments come in at once. Okay, let's... And there's me just... All right. The last one I had was Herbert in Germany. Okay, whoa. Um, Steve with F18 
Level, yeah, the weather is awesome here. It is absolutely fantastic and the wind's just coming up now as well. Yes, yeah, so it is an F-18 under the cover. Also, what website did you say I should upload my photos of her? Oh yeah, so for any um, photographs for Show Us Your Cat or anything else that you wanna send, if it's too much to email, then use wetransfer.com. That seems to be working well at the moment. Again, like I did last week, I will put, um, where will I put it? In, I'll put it on the Facebook page and in the community tab on YouTube, which will come up as a post, um, any links. And I'll put them in the, in the um, what you call it? the comments of this video, suggestions for trampolines. Oh, not getting the context now. Hello, Ralph. Why does the FX1 not have EPO3 rudders? That's a good question. Um, the EPO3 rudder blades have only actually been made for the Hobie 16, which has got a different shape of rudder blade you could take your Hobie 16 rudder blades, fill the holes and then re-drill them so then they'd fit on other boats. But, um, but the other reason is on the boat, such, well, on everything other than a Hobie 16 or a Hobie 14, the amount of what is in the water is much less as a percentage than on those boats. As a percentage, the amount of rudder that you have in the water is a lot on a 16 or a 14, but on an FX1 or a Tiger or a Tornado or pretty much anything else, you've got a fair bit of hull or daggerboard or both sitting in the water, which means there's effectively less load on the rudders, meaning that the rudder doesn't need to be quite such a loaded weapon. That is my best answer. Hi, Jeff, Ministry of Truth. Any news about opening and the season? Yes, yeah, so we are opening on July the 1st for anybody who can get here. That is, that's pretty much the size of it. The um, seasonal hotels are allowed to open um, I think it's already actually. Um, and there are restaurants opening in the village now. So um, things are looking up. Right, Stephen, yet yeah, asking about the thoughts on solo Hobie 16 with a ferocious tide. Yeah, actually, this is one of the points that I brought up in the video I've just um, recorded. And that was. If you're sailing in tide, especially amongst moored boats, always have the boat sailing as safely as possible if you are gonna be in harm's way if you capsize. So for example, if you've got the option to go as kind of, as fairly dicey around the front or as safe around the back, go for the safe one especially if there's tide involved. Um, yeah, always take the more cautious path if there are other vessels involved. And then with tide, if another concern could be if you're a man overboard. So, um, yeah, I would, when I, when I sailed at Felixstowe Ferry in the tide, I sailed a lot single-handed on the Dart 18 and I largely got away with it. But that was like 30 years ago at least when I think safety was a bit looser back then and I was definitely um, playing it fast and loose with safety. But I perhaps wouldn't recommend what I did to other people because I wouldn't want other people to get in trouble due to a shoddy recommendation. So if you are going out sailing solo, then if, and if you can get a friend 
to go out sailing at the same time, that would be a good plan. If you can let as many people know that you're going out sailing as well, that would be a good plan. Make sure you know what the weather's going to do and so on. So I think the comments aren't coming up. Um, greetings from Mauritius. Getting chilly here. What? Oh, that's Kurt. Oh, hi, Kurt. Yes. 12 weeks of lockdown. Oh, my goodness. Greetings from Dublin. Good to have you with us, Dublin. That's as far as my comments go in the live comments. So there we go. I'm going to I'm going to cut it off there. Um, I just thought I'd come back. Um, but yeah, I'll have a video out later on this evening on the topic of safety. Um, so thanks for bearing with me uh, this afternoon, this evening, this morning, whatever time of day it is where you are. I'll just see if there's any more comments coming in. Oh yeah, what is under the cover? Ah, all right, let's return to the cover. This one is a Hobie Tiger um, under the blue. But under this one, this is the good old design C2. Um, I've been having a good bit of head scratching, trying to remember where the bits of string go. Um, but I think I have nailed it. So the C2 is waiting for um, anybody to come out and I will be taking you out on the C2, kite up in the strong wind, 21.3 knots. That's what we're looking at. Okay, and I think the question from Eric trampoline suggestions for a Hobie 16 is that you need a trampoline for it um, I think this is a good place to ask actually the global joyrider TV community um, if you are looking for anything for your boat I'm uh, gonna put out in the next days a uh, boats for sale boats wanted video but that can extend to boat parts as well. If you're looking for boat parts, or if you perhaps if you've got boat parts up for grabs, such as sails, trampolines, um, I don't know why you'd be selling a trampoline. Maybe you would, I don't know. Maybe you've got a spare mast that you wanna sell, something like that. When are you getting a foiling? Oh my goodness, all the comments coming at once. I'll get, I'll, um, yeah, so if you're buying a boat, if you want to sell a boat, um, if you've got boat parts, send me an email. Oh my goodness, Frank, yeah. De All right, next time I put a sail up on a boat, we'll be looking at downhaul and outhaul. That's for sure. Sorry to keep you waiting on that one. But um, I don't think since the Easy Junior rig sessions last week haven't actually had a sail up on a boat so um that's why that hasn't been done um yeah what else just came in i solo righted a hobie cat 15 and i'm 50 kilos that is impressive i would wager it was pretty windy to do that in a strong wind like i think once you get to about 25 knots um, the boat if it's pointing the right way will actually come upright without any weight on the writing line at all so you actually sometimes have to actively try to keep the boat from coming upright until you're ready for the boat to come upright but uh, fair play Salt City in Utah do great custom decks ask Stephen if you want to know more um, when are you getting the foiling cat okay unfortunately there's some people racing I think um, 50cc mopeds uh, just on the road it's because there's no there's no tourists here so um, the local people have to make their own entertainment uh, so 50cc moped racing is uh, the new sport. Um, 
yeah, the foiling cap, because of the situation, it means that basically we can't afford to get it this year. We're still going to get it. We're getting a foiling Viper from uh, Goodall Designs, um, but we just could not afford to get it this year because um, we lost a lot of customers this year uh, due to the situation. But we will be getting the foil in Viper, hopefully for next year. So hopefully we'll be opening on time next year in May. And 1st of May, you could be foiling on a catamaran in Vasiliki Bay, champagne sailing conditions. All right. Yeah, the Dolphin Striker video. Oh yeah, th this is some more information fresh in on the Dolphin Striker tension. Okay, I may, I think last week we t I talked a bit about the Dolphin Striker tension on the 16 and I got it wrong. Um, so what we're doing is we're gonna measure, okay, um, between the center of the rudder pins on both sides so get your tape measure measure between the rudder pins center and then perhaps write that number down and then measure between the center of the bolts on the bows phase one measurements and then if you are heavy which would be over let's say over a combined weight of 150 kilos then that measurement wants to be something like nine centimeters different, which means at the front of the boat, nine centimeters smaller than at the back of the boat. So th the boat is kind of like in skiing terms, snow plowing. The bows are closer in than the sterns by nine centimeters. If you are heavier, is this the right way around? This is actually the wrong way around. Um, if you, or is it? I can't remember what I just said. But if you're above about 150 kilos, uh, nine centimeters in at the front. If you are uh, lighter than 150 kilos, you want more, which would be around 11 or 12 centimeters in at the front. The way that you change that is on this nut here both sides do it evenly so if you tighten this up that's going to bend the front beam more pulling the front of the boat in if you loosen this off it's going to allow the front beam to straighten pushing the front of the boat out there we are if it's too loose so if the bows of the boat haven't got that aren't that much closer in than the sterns you risk cracking underneath the mast step and if it is too tight you risk cracking around here there we are that is dolphin striker in a nutshell thanks to gavin for the information on that you never spoke about trailering and which trailer you're quite right it's yeah it's not something that comes up a great deal here to be honest um yeah that'll be a little bit down the line i think the trailering video i think there are um there are a lot more qualified people to speak about trailering than me because i don't do so much the only tra okay we will do it what's the cap with shroud stays cat with shroud stays oh you'll have to be a bit more descriptive there james um because um yeah not not getting it frank question i recently realized that one bridal wire Oh, okay, if your bridle wires are different lengths, 
also you've had to compensate with the shrouds in different positions. I think the main problem is not an issue, really. The, um, the problem is going to be that the boat is going to be different on the different tacks. Um, so if you're just sailing in a recreational manner, as long as the mast can't you've got enough rig tension on and you're happy with how it feels, then there's no great problem there with having the rigging all a little bit off, let's say. Um, the problem would be if you want to compete against other boats, your boat's gonna go much better on one tack than it is on the other tack. Uh, so um, so in, a, in a nutshell, Frank, it's not a problem unless you wanna compete and be competitive but if you do find that your boat is perhaps sailing better upwind on one tack than it is on the other tack that will be uh the reason all right just back pedaling here all right so if uh james if you're referring to these lines coming this is, um, this is not a bad question if it could have been a question, is you can see right up there, top of the mast, we've got a line coming down. That's actually the main halyard. And what we're doing is we're running the main halyard upwind. Um, so upwind for our kind of average wind condition. Um, and that is giving it a lot of leverage which means if the wind gets really, really strong, like even if we have like um, 40 knots of wind, that boat is not going anywhere. So this is basically just advanced tie downs. We call this storm ties, um, but because there's nobody going out sailing um, anytime soon, apart from on the boats that I happen to be using, then we've just storm tied everything so that then if a load of wind does come through, we don't have to worry about it. Good question. Uh, the one with the blue cover is a Hobie Tiger, incidentally. Um, oh yeah, would the F-18 with no jib work well? Yes, that will work absolutely fine. If you either want to sail solo, or in a really strong wind and you just don't want that extra power, then leave the jib on the beach. This is um, a good idea because not only will it give you less power when it's windy, but the jib, if it's windy, is quite likely to do a lot of flogging. Flogging meaning that. Ah! Flogging. Um, and that flogging is gonna destroy the jib. So if you don't take the jib with you, the jib's not going to get destroyed. There we go. Good question. Like that. Any, anybody else? I dare say that um, all the questions will come in at once. Um, okay. So I think that's about the size of it. Um, yeah, so send me an email if you've got anything you want to buy or you want to sell. And um, I'll hopefully get that video made tomorrow or on Friday. I've just had a hectic schedule. There's a lot of videos I've been meaning to make, but the schedule has been absolutely ridiculous. And why is it that all the comments come in at once when you think there aren't any more? Um, there is definitely a glitch in the matrix. At what point do you worry about your boat breaking when the wind gets really strong? Um, I think the boat can take it and if the wind gets too strong, the boat will capsize. And um, so with a boat like this, which will capsize if it gets too much wind, it's not the wind that's going to break the boat. Um, if you go out sailing with too much wind, you do risk uh, 
there's obviously an increased risk in damage to the boat, um, especially to the sails. Um, but at the end of the day, if it's too windy, then what will probably happen is your capsize. Once you've turned your boat upside down, then nothing's gonna get broken unless your mast hits something under the bottom. So I don't think that sailing in more wind, it is of course gonna be more likely that you're gonna be damaging your boat just because things are gonna happen. Perhaps um, a member of the team on the boat is gonna go flying, maybe hit something, uh, break themselves or the thing they hit, but the boat will capsize if it's too much wind, I think. Does that make any sense? Um, hello, Ollie. Um, why H? Didn't get that. Did you ever post a link to Murray's force day kit? No, I didn't. I didn't find it actually. But um, this force day kit is brilliant. I'm going to, I'll try to remember to have a look at that because that is a good piece of kit for a 16. When's your next live sale? Good question. I'll try to do it next week. It's um, just at the moment, it would have been a bad idea because the uh, dropped telephone in the water would uh, come out with some less. What is your point when you say not going out, wind's too strong? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll say at the moment, wind's too... All right, at the moment, got no safety cover. So I'll say the wind's too strong to go sailing if I feel that there is a very strong chance that I'll capsize, I think. Um, but generally, I'll say the wind's too strong. Um, yeah, it depends. Because my situation here is different to most people's situation because as well as what I can do, um, because I sort of see myself a bit as a high wind expert, um, but I have to set an example. I have to be responsible. If, if it's blowing 35 knots and I'm rigging up to go out, that shows other people that it is possible and perhaps other people who perhaps are gonna have a terrible time might start thinking it seems like a good idea. So I have to be responsible and rein it in a little bit. But that's because I'm working in a place where other people are going sailing and it's my job to set a responsible example. But I would, if, if there's safety cover and the person I'm going sailing with is good, and a lot of it comes down to sea state as well. If the sea's really flat and there's 35 knots of wind, that's, that's going to be doable. But you need to be um, really in a, a mental position where you know that you can dominate the boat. Because once you let the boat take over, then that's it. Game over. The fear. All right, let's just see. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one, Stephen. Boat tearing up sails is an acronym. Boat bring out another thousand pounds bracket. Like that. Yeah, next live sail. Let's hope next Wednesday, let's plumb that in for. Um, all right, the email address for anything is, you've got pen handy, Total Joyrider at icloud.com if you look in uh, any of the videos on uh, the Joyrider TV YouTube channel uh, go to the description you'll find the email address there if you didn't have a pen handy just then hello Christian nice to have you on board any chance to get a trick and tips on laser whoa Cool, you're asking the wrong person there. I, I, I can sail a laser, but you don't want to be asking me for tips on laser sailing. There are probably 
something like um, 57,000 people who are better at laser sailing out there than I am. So worth having a poke around on YouTube before resorting to uh, Joyrider TV laser department. But um, I think in the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna be getting out on some monohulls, new series, Cat Sailor on a monohull. That's gonna be fun, do some swimming. Okay, what writing system would you recommend? Uh, the only one I can recommend is what I use, which is just a simple writing line. And then the one that I really like is the bag system. Check out the video on the bag capsize writing line system that I use. God, it's getting pretty fresh out here. Might have to go out windsurfing. Don't know. Um, all right. All right, I'm, I'm actually gonna withdraw into the workshop. It's getting, it's getting so fierce out there. All right, so here we are. All right, I'm just gonna try to go through these previous comments. There you go, there's, uh, what's, what's the best view in the workshop? I think over here, there we go. Um, let's see. Um, ever have a boat sail off after writing without you? Yes. Um, quite a lot on the boats with a self-tacking jib. Um, if you're not careful and you don't go about it the right way, then the self-tacking jib, you can't actually sheet out completely and that could pull the boat off the wind enough so the boat powers up after the capsize. And quite a few times, I'm sure other people with self-tacking jibs have found themselves hanging on to the dolphin striker kind of water skiing from the dolphin striker, just getting dragged along. The way to overcome this problem is before writing the capsize, don't let the traveller out more than half. Because what will happen if the traveller is in halfway is when the boat comes upright, that bit of wind in the mainsail will bring the boat up into the wind. Should be enough to um, have a positive effect over the jib and help you to survive. Right, just scrolling back. I'm just scrolling back. Don't worry if I haven't answered your question just yet. I'm just scrolling back to have a look. Um, what is the four stay kit mentioned? Basically, it's a lever for a Hobie 16, which automatically tightens the four stay when you pull the jib up. I, I will find it, and when I've found it, I will uh, make sure that link is very well known to everybody in the global community. Here we are. Great to have you all with us, by the way. Glad we got there in the end. There's some great questions here. Oh, here we go. Took my 16 out. First time, no jib. And, oh, nice, nice, nice. Yes, of course. The 16 no jib is the biggest discovery of the year for me so far. And hopefully that can be for you as well. Do you believe in the lies of society? I believe everything I hear. Uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, no, I don't, uh, but at the same time, I don't believe a word of it. Uh, I believe nothing and everything. It just depends on what it is. All right, so I can't dwell on that. Let's get back to some boating. Do you have any thoughts on old stainless trapeze line adjusters that have a pinch cleat and the blocks built in? Oh, I think I know what you mean. Hold on, let's see if I can find one. We'll flip round, let's take a look. Uh, um, ooh, maybe, okay, maybe this was a bit of a stretch, finding one um, at short. Oh yes, here we go. And we're back in the now. 
Um, are you talking about something like this? This is what we use for trapeze adjusters on all of the catamarans that have on the fly trapeze adjustment and these are good. The um, thing is these do wear out over time. So I think in the real world, oh no. All right then. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeff. Um, but these you need to replace them probably every five years or so. Okay. Just pedaling back here. Yeah, sorry, Jeff, I can't, I can't help you though. I don't know. Any thoughts on stainless trapeze adjusters that have a pinch? Yeah, not really fancy. Yeah, um, send me some pictures, Jeff, but I, they sound pretty good. If you had an empty toolbox, what would be the first five things? What five, what five things would you put in an empty toolbox? Depends on the context, but um, maybe, because it could be a toolbox that I'm using for, maybe I'll put all my kind of videoing equipment in for making videos, or maybe it'd be a rudder servicing toolbox. But um, let's say very generally, first thing to go in would be tape, um, electrical tape, and maybe a roll of gaffer tape. Can that count as one? Then after that, maybe some shackles, um, various sizes, split rings, clevis pins, uh, various ropes, um, various ropes and um, a pair of pliers, a knife and um, I particularly like this. Um, this is the Gerber, um, I think this is called a power frame, um, multi-tool, very nice. And you're not gonna believe this. Yeah, that's written backwards, which probably means that everything is backwards. That's to total joyrider, backwards. There we go. Um, they do that for you at Gerber, nice. Uh, they'll put your name on it. All right, so that is what I'd put in a toolbox. If a uh, six pack of beer, love one. Sean needs boots. Um, hi Jochem, nice to have you on board. Uh, do you use neoprene or rail rug on the rails? We use the neoprene that is supplied by Hobie Cat, but um, I've actually been sent some uh, alternative grip. I think it was described as rail rug by um, Office Hands Dave, um, who is one of the sailors from Lake Lanier, Georgia, uh, to put on some rails to try it out, which is very kind of him. Can't wait to get on that bad boy. Wow, there's a lot here. Um, all right, bet you can't throw a double, a double 20. Um, no, I don't think I can, because... Um, no, I can't find any darts. That is the first thing. Um, all right, when would you choose to use a self-tacking jib, is that based on the conditions if you are solo? Um, I think if I was gonna be going sailing, um, well, firstly, the self-tacking jib is a good idea if, um, if you're sailing with a jib and you're sailing solo. Um, yeah, because it means you don't have to operate the jib. But with what you don't wanna have to do especially with a boat like a Prindle 15, is to fit a self-tacking jib track. That is a hell of a piece of equipment to fit. And then the video that I did on the low budget self-tacking jib, really it's just a self-jibing jib. Um, so the jib will take care of itself when jibing. But um, yeah, if you're not racing, um, 
I wouldn't worry about it. No, uh, I don't think I'd worry about it at all. The time when we developed the self-jibing jib was when we were racing in the Hobie Tiger class before the self-tacking jib was a, a thing. Oh, I've got to skip to this. Jockham said, the videos you make are nice, but could you make one about servicing your rudders? which is less chaotic. Oh my goodness. Ouch. Oh, um, perhaps that's because you watched the servicing your rudders video, which was from a live stream. Um, let me know, actually, is that the live one where people were asking questions that would have seemed chaotic? The one I actually filmed quite a long, uh, probably about five years ago. I liked Finas all right. I'd watched... I did watch that recently and I thought that that information in that video is well presented and accurate. So if you could let me know now if that's what you mean. I wasn't planning on making another rudder servicing video. I've done quite a few. All right. Oh, the boots. The wetsuit boots. Okay, that must be in the Amazon storefront where they're not available. I will try to find an alternative one. But um, yeah, I use the Gull Code Zero boots, which um, they're, service, they're serving me well. They've, um, they've got excellent grip for when you're standing at the back of your Hobie Cat or Prindle, Nacra, uh, Dart 18, anything else. Um, thank you very much, Steve. That is a glowing endorsement. I'll take that as a tip of the hat. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm hoping it was the live stream because the real one's, um, the real one's much better. Have you ever forgot to put a plug in on a Hobie 16? At least one of the two. Uh, yes. Yes. But it's the sort of thing that once you've done it once or twice, this is forgetting to put your bungs in. Most important thing. Um, as soon as you even know that you're going sailing, first thing you do is put the bungs in. I personally check my bungs are in probably three times um, before I put the boat in the water, uh, just to be sure, because it is an absolute day ruiner for getting to put your bungs in. All right. Rudders. Heated screwdriver. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what Stephen's saying is when you... Let's... Uh, hold on. Okay. Here we go. Here we have a rudder stock. This is the Delrin screw. This is specific to a Hobie, but um, I think it's fun for everyone. Um, okay, so if you don't turn this screw and you sail in salt water especially, this screw will seize up. I've just serviced this one actually. Um, so that is turning nicely. Um, okay, so if that, if you absolutely can't turn that, then somehow you need to get that out because otherwise you can't adjust the tension in the spring that holds the cam, that holds the rudder down. So what you could do is why do um, more often than not is I try the heated screwdriver. So if you heat up your tip, put it in, then you get a bit more of a bite on the screw. But sometimes that's not enough because the screw has actually become one with the rudder stock. And um, all you can do is drill it out. I've done a video on reconditioning your rudder stock, so do check that one out. But um, the heated screwdriver is a good tip because getting the drill out is... I've timed it actually 
Um, I've done quite a few of these and it now takes me half an hour to totally drill out a screw and clean out the thread and put the new screw in. But that is in an open rudder stock like this. In a closed one, like on a 16, it's much more difficult. So probably add another 15 minutes. Mm. Check your screws. All right. Right, I'm gonna have to wrap this up in a minute. Um, when are you gonna start uploading some Hobie footage? That's a great question. As soon as I get out there, um, hopefully I'll get out there tomorrow. But as soon as I get out there, I'll have more cameras on the boat than one, uh, but probably less than four. Um, and I'll upload the footage on the day because I need to share this stuff with you guys because it's fun. Um, I have a problem with one rudder cam not rotating on lifting the rudders. That's okay. If your rudder cam's not rotating, chances are the screw is too tight, which means that's not going to rotate. Another problem can be inside here. Can we see him? He's called the plunger. If the plunger is sticky, then that might stop the cam from coming back up. So what, um, what I generally do when I service the rudders is I'll take it all out, take the plunger out. And if the plunger is too fat to go up and down in this part freely, I'll just take a file to the plunger and just square the sides off just so that it can go up and down freely in there. I hope that answers, um, well, it's a possible solution. But um, check out the servicing your rudders video and just loosen off these screws if you can. There we are. I know you don't keep... All right. The boats at Wag lay in the water all day. Uh, yes, uh, Joachim, the, we leave a lot of the boats that we have here out on moorings uh, for the day. And this is absolutely terrible for them, which means that our sails only really last. We get about two seasons out of them before we look at replacing them. And then the jibs will generally go first. So after two seasons, we'll, we'll replace the jib. And then perhaps another two seasons and we'll be looking at replacing the main sail because the sails had so much UV, which has absolutely destroyed them. OK, you guys launch all your boats from the beach. But would you ever be able to show launch from a trailer at a dock? Oh, my goodness. That is asking a question. Will, I'll have to look into that. Um, that might be a bit of a stretch because of the lack of resources that we've got available to do that. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up in a second. So thanks very much. Oh, any tips for storing a Hobie on a raft? Okay, sorry, I, I, Mr. H, I can't help you there at all. Um, sorry about that. How about more videos on the Hobie 14? Yes, please, Craig. I will be out there on the 14. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do with our 14, my big concern with that bad boy is that the trapeze wire is going to break. Um, and I will be, yeah, fire away, Andre. I'll be, I'll just uh, talk about the 14 for a second. Um, yeah, broken trapeze wire could lead to man overboard. So if the trapeze wire broke, I will be hanging on to the main sheet like my life depends on it because maybe it does don't want to get separated from that bad boy so i'm going to be looking at replacing the trapeze wires on the 14 and then hobie 14 here we come um what was it also the writing pole i know that there's a lot of interest in a video about the writing pole which i haven't got round to yet um but it is coming up it's on my list but i've just been quite busy to say the least 
Uh, just a lot going on. All right. So where is a good place to buy used mainsails and used jibs? I would just keep my eye on all of the places where people advertise things which are secondhand. Like personally here in Europe, I'd be look. well, I, I always, I like eBay. Um, always look at eBay, but just put it into a Google search, used sales type of boat and see what um, Google uh, throws up there. That's the best I can suggest. But um, in Europe, there's a lot of places that hold a lot of stock, especially in Holland and Germany, um, where they have all sorts of things. Though the prices at those places will be a bit higher rather than a private seller where the prices will be a bit more realistic. But, um, all right, I've got a... All right, Andre says, sailed my first time on a cat the other day, Hobie 13. Hobie 13, great choice. That's the one that came before the Dragoon. And it's a great boat. It's like Dragoon crossed with a Hobie 16 with the asymmetric hulls. Perhaps a hull shape more like a Prindle 15, even. Smaller. Yeah, nice choice there. Uh, might go again on the 16. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Looking for a cat, two people. 160 kilos. Yeah, the Hobie 16 would be kind of on the limit if that is going to be your everyday crew weight, 160. Um, Hobie 16, Hobie 18. But depends on what you get hold of. If you're going to be sailing in stronger winds, perhaps sometimes solo, 16 is going to be good. If you're going to be sailing with at least 160 each time the 18 is going to serve you better. All right. Do you mean the 14 or the 16? Oh. All right. Okay. You're talking amongst yourselves. That's good. Yeah, Holland. Yeah, you know it. Shipping charges are crazy. Not wrong. All right. So I'm just wrapping this up now, just making sure there's nothing. Okay, um, if you want to get the full chart of all of the rope lengths for a Hobie 16 or Hobie Tiger, head over to my Patreon page. That doesn't mean you have to, you don't have to pay anything. Uh, but on my Patreon page, there is a lot of uh, very juicy information. Just go through, I think it probably be in posts on there. Um, but um, thanks to everybody who has been um, kind of sponsoring me through the Patreon page. It really does make a big difference and helps these videos to continue being made. Either that or if you uh, get a T-shirt from TotalJoyRider.com. At the moment, the T-shirts are taking a while to come out. I have to warn you there. Um, can't wait to see you out here, Sean. Thanks, Craig. Nice one. Um, all right, I think Harkin six to one for the main sheet. Bingo, yeah, it's really good. Um, if, if I'm using any, oh, yeah, the Patreon page address, um, I don't actually know what it is off the top of my head, but if you look in any of my other videos in the uh, description, you'll find a link to my Patreon page and uh, there you'll find all that good stuff. Thanks, James. Always a pleasure. Hope that's all right, Eric. Uh, yeah, or anyone else who wants to have a look. Um, yeah, the, so the last question I'm going to answer is about the Harkon blocks, the Harkon main sheet blocks are so much better. Uh, the six to one Harkon blocks, really, really good. Um, have I got one here? Um, all right. 
this isn't this isn't the six to one, but if you're buying the Harkon blocks, if you can get the bottom block that kind of looks like this, this is a single, but um, the triple of this, rather than rather than the one that looks like this, um, this is actually a top block, but the sort of carbon looking one, because this one has a switchable ratchet, which means you can turn that on and off. Whereas this one is on pressure and it's not as chewy. Um, so there we go. Yes, still good, but yes, worth the money. Hmm, yes, hmm, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna say goodbye there. Um, thanks very much for tuning in to um, live stream take two. And um, I'll be back live again next Wednesday, hopefully on the boat. But if I'm on the boat, it means I can't answer as many questions. Um, thank you, Stephen, always a pleasure. Sorry it was a bit late this afternoon. And as I said, I'm going to be uploading another video, hopefully this evening. Next stream like this will be next Wednesday. Um, the next live stream, in fact, will be on Friday, say at 5.30 Greek time for stretching for sailors. It's important to stretch. Thanks very much. All right. And we'll see you soon. Stay safe out there. Where do you sail? Vasiliki on the island of Lefkus in Greece. In fact, this is the easiest question to answer. It's good to save that one till the end. That is where I sail. Oh, yeah. All right, bingo. Wow, that's, that's long. <laughs>